I've got it! Today, we're making a custom Space Marine Apothecary from the Leviathan box set. But today's gonna be special. We're doing a collab. We're collabing with Insert Art upstairs. Oh. I'm here. Dave, you explain. It's tabletop time. When we do our battle reports, Alicia from Insert Art does amazing portraits of our characters and we actually thought it would be fun if for this video I created a character based off Alicia's concept art. They're doing a video on their channel of Warhammer 40k characters from descriptions. So I gave a description of the Gravis Armor Apothecary and Alicia has drawn me a concept art sketch and I'm going to base my conversions on that sketch today. So there's something really cool and interesting about sculpting off an artwork and the fact that Alicia isn't an expert at Warhammer 40k and didn't know the full details of the model has made for some really interesting decisions that are going to be really fun to modify. Some of them deceptively easy, some of them deceptively hard. So I'm going to need to change a lot about this miniature and one of the key things I'm going to have to change is actually the fundamental pose. Alicia's concept art of this character has quite a stoic static pose but the Apothecary and Gravis Armor is mid-step and firing. Now, thankfully, Gravis Armor hasn't changed very much, and we actually have three kits of aggressors in the studio. Don't know what Jazza was planning for them, but they're sitting there unused. So I'm going to grab the aggressor body that has a static pose and use that as the foundation for my conversion. Most of the pieces here are quite compatible. However, I did want to take a lot of the detail from the Apothecary and bring it over to this new model. That included the Apothecary's needle pistol pouch, of course, that great specimen container and arm, and his backpack. Conveniently, they have not changed the backpack mounting even though this is push fit and the Apothecary's backpack fits exactly the same way as a regular Gravis Marine. This would mean a whole bunch of carving though as I make parts fit. And in particular, there's going to be some very specific sculpting required. So the head. Now, a bunch of you have raised a really valid point, which is that since Jazza made the Ojibwe nation a touchstone for the design of the space bears, we haven't actually seen seen many heads or faces that phenotypically resemble Native Americans. And especially in our last video where we use Space Bear Bits heads, there definitely wasn't much representation there. And I wanted to address this by basically saying the problem has been that the parts don't exist. The Native peoples of America are incredibly diverse, with nations spread from one side of the continent to the other, and each one has their own unique culture. So there isn't really a perfect one head or one face fits all look. And previously the only pack I was aware of of 3D printable bits that represented Native Americans did not feel like a good fit for the Ojibwe. Someone in our Discord pointed out these products, Warheads, which have a more diverse spread of Native Americans. So thankfully I found some heads I felt would work really well for this model. I've actually printed one off today, which is great. If you've been painting minis for as long as I have, you'll know that representation is pretty limited. Now in saying this, I did want to remind people that the space bears in law are a mix of Terrans, Space Wolves, as they do use Space Wolves gene seed, and recruits from this new homeworld that has the Ojibwe Nation culture as its touchstone. And it's 40k thrown in the mix. This isn't supposed to be a proper representation of people today. It's fantasy. But even so, I think it's really important that more people are creating more interesting heads, and it's nice that Games Workshop is finally doing that with armies like Cities of Sigma in Age of Sigma, and hopefully we see more of this in the future. Because we have these warheads that have a bunch more head options, we'll be able to better represent the vision of the faction that Jazza has going forward, which is super exciting. So um, thumbs up for people sculpting more diverse heads. Let's see more of it. So Alicia had done some really fun drawing designs of these implements on the backpack and the original apothecary has a searchlight and also one nice little servo claw. So I wanted to make things more reminiscent of Alicia's artwork. I found a nice surgical light that looked similar to the one Alicia had drawn. It also reminded me of the lamp from Pixar and I cut that off. That was actually from an old 40K objective kit and I'd already used a bunch of parts from that so it was useless as it stood. So it was really good to be able to salvage another bit. With the lamp aside, 
side, I also chopped off and reposed the existing servo arm to give it a bit more of a dynamic look with the new silhouette. And then I hand made a injector using plastic card to make a dirty looking syringe. I have got my conversion behind me and I'm really happy with how it's come about, but now I need to do the actual sculpting. I've hacked everything into place with plastic. There's a few places, especially in the arm around the joints of the elbow that I need to go in with some grilly putt. That's a mix of green stuff and miller putt that I like to use to sculpt out the undersuit of the model. As well as that, there's some fur, which I'll do in the classic Space Bears style and uh, some chains that I need to put on the model. I'm really excited to see how this has come together and I'm pretty happy with how faithful it has been to Alicia Sketch, which is super cool. So I would glued together the rough shape of how the pistol arm would be holding the gun, salvaging that elbow pad and also the entire forearm. This did leave a lot of empty space, especially in the inner upper arm. So I needed to make a very smooth panel of that upper arm armor and then also bring in the undersuit in between these segments. The way I did this is I actually have been finding a wooden toothpick has been an amazing tool and wetting that with either a little bit of saliva or Vaseline has been working really well for me too. Vaseline can be a problem in it stops paint adhering to the model and it can also make it difficult for the green stuff to adhere to the model. But by using it sparingly and wiping it off when it's dry, I find that that isn't a problem. For the fine details and crisp edges, such as the edges of the armor and also the very narrow little ribbed sections of the undersuit, I used a knife rather than a sculpting tool to get a really precise point. I also had allowed this green stuff in Millipart to wait for for a little bit of time so it wasn't tacky or sticky, which meant it didn't get stuck on my sculpting tools, which was a big help. And once this was sculpted, the tip of using some isopropyl alcohol and wiping it down really helps get a nice smooth finish. I am almost done and I'm so proud. I am not someone who traditionally thinks of myself as a good physical sculptor. It's something I've been learning and hard inorganic shapes are very hard to sculpt smoothly, but I'm really happy with how this uh, apothecary's arm has turned out. I basically had to re-sculpt a whole bunch of his Space Marine power armor. So this is super cool. And now I've got the easy stuff, which is some Space Bears pelts and uh, gluing on some chains and stuff. So let's get to it. With the hard areas done, I could move on to some of the soft sculpting. And that meant using one of our Space Bears bits, the chain, to replicate the look Alicia had done of the chain crossing the torso. But before I could place that on, I needed to sculpt some little fur patches and run some chain around the waist. So I did what I had been doing with the Space Bears, creating some green stuff in Milliput, and then using some scissors to pick out nice little fur sections, create a really good texture. Once I'd made these areas, I could then stick on that bit of Space Bears chain, just using some hot water to heat bend it and ensure I got the shape I liked. So the battle report, the board, all the build up we've been talking about, we're actually filming it in just over a week. It's going to be really cool. And the character we've made today, our Care Bear, is going to be one of the central characters. That character, our Care Bear, is going to be one of the main players in the narrative of this battle report. And we're super thankful and lucky that Chris from Way of the Brush is willing to voice act. So we're going to have some voice acting. We're going to have lots of character lines with different people taking on different personalities. But we have one problem. Our Care Bear doesn't have a name. So if you could jump down in the comments. Get in the comments! <laughs> and give us some thoughtful suggestions on what our Care Bear is name should be that would be super cool especially if you are from one of the Anishinaabe nations and might have a really appropriate word or name for a character such as this an apothecary it would be super cool to include that in the world and all we're all building Murray hi so it's come to my attention that Murray actually hasn't painted a space bear on the channel and since Jazza has given this project to all of us it's time for me to hand off another space bear project and I know what you're gonna say I haven't been painting much it's because I've been doing some cool stuff sculpting and doing 3d modeling and I am really excited to paint I do love painting but because we work as a studio as a team we all get to share these projects together and work on them so don't fret that I'm not painting this model. You do enough. <laughs> I, I get to paint a space bear. <laughs> Which is really exciting. Murray, I can't wait to see what you come up with. Uh, but I did want to say that caveat because we've had some comments. Like, David comments. Painting. Well, I do like painting. I just also like sculpting. So yeah, I'm going to go sculpt a trader guard. No, a town. Let's paint an apothecary. The first stage of painting our apothecary is of course to paint it 
completely white and that's the priming we'll go with. Mainly with a couple of zenithals starting with grey and just going all the way up to white. This will immediately give us some shading and allow us a really nice base to start with. Then it's simply a process of blocking in all our colours starting with the fur, the metals, all the blacks and the golds. Then when I'm happy with the balance and arrangement of the colours all over the model it's time to start doing rough highlights. I'm not going to go too overboard with this because of course we're going to streak and grime this model as is the traditional Space Bears way. So a rough overbrush on the brown furs and establishing the white highlights to pure white will more than suffice for this part of the process. Now before we streak and grime I want to do all the little details, the markings and namely a chapter symbol and all of the little markings that we might have on him otherwise because of course they will get covered in grime and filth as he goes about his business in the 41st millennium. I'm going to replicate one of the patterns we've done before, the triangles on his knee pad and then do the Space Bears logo on that same knee pad. This splash of red will create a nice amount of movement for the eye as it moves around the shoulder pads, gun and now to the knee pad. For the last step I decided that his medical apron was looking just a little bit plain. All the metals and areas that will be black were given a nice hearty coat of black contrast. Now, I've just finished varnishing our little apothecary, so now it's time for strip and grime. He's nice and dirty. So with our experience of using streak and grime in this studio, we've actually found that pipe cleaners make a really nice and soft way of removing said streak and grime. They're smaller, softer, leave less residue and can be made into different shapes to better reach the areas that you need to get to. Now that I've removed as much excess pigment as I'm happy with, it's time to let that sit properly for a few minutes, aided of course with a little assistance from the hairdryer. Now up to the painting, we've done a huge amount of shading and texturing using the streak and grime, but it's time to make those highlights really pop. I'm immediately going to go in and work on the white, adding in really scratchy highlights. I don't want it to look smooth. I'm going to add in lots of micro scratches and chips. Now I'm up to a part that I was really looking forward to, painting the face. Dave has managed to acquire a really nice head to work on here to really get across the Ojibwe aesthetic. And it's my challenge to try and make the skin tone as authentic as possible, which is going to be a lot of fun. As it's a skin tone, I don't have a lot of experience with painting and I love new challenges. I originally established the face with a nice hearty brown and allowed the streak and grime to further shade it. When I'm highlighting up a face, I like to add increments of yellows and reds with just a little touch of bone. This will give a really nice hearty flesh color and I'll just adjust these proportions on the areas as I see fit. If I think an area just needs to be a bit warmer, I'll add a bit of red. And I'll continue in this manner until I'm happy with the results. And I have to say, I am really happy with how this has turned out. Now while I'm riding off that last high, I'm going to start with some really cool effects, namely making some of the panels on this model glow. Specifically this little bio sample he's carrying around. I'm going to re-establish the windows in a white and then go in with an airbrush to get this really nice pop of blue. Then I'll simply keep going in, readjusting the white in a slightly smaller area than before before, perhaps adding a little bit more blue to tone it down and then I'll just keep establishing the white until I get this really nice glowing effect. Then I'm simply going to re-emulate this effect in green on his little wrist mounted computer. Then with a few additions onto the base, namely tufts and snow, I think we're ready to show off our first completely finished Space Bears character. Here is the Care Bear. Oh, he's so cool. 
Oh my God, I love him. <laughs> oh my God, the fur looks incredible. And one of the really cool things about it is because you aren't as into the Warhammer hobby as we are, you sort of came up with ideas that were a bit outside the box, but it looks awesome. It looks so cool. You've done it so well. This simple repose was the hardest part of the whole project, just getting him to do this. Sorry about that. I thought it'd be easy to like show you just like. <laughs> Alicia is now going to be taking my artwork that I made, this sculpture, and then turning that into a proper portrait we're gonna use for our battle report. But this isn't where it ends because Alicia and Ariel over on Insert a Heart are actually doing a Warhammer 40K characters from descriptions video. Yes, myself, an absolute Warhammer novice, I am redrawing the Emperor. And you have to check out the video to see the cool creation Ariel drew. But I can tell you, they both look awesome and very fun. Thank you for working with me on this. It's the first time we've ever done a collab Insert Art and Tabletop. Oh my God. Like officially. I love it. This is so exciting. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Today's video has been super fun and I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and thank you as well to our patrons for all your support. And if you'd like to check out Insert Art's awesome 40K characters from description, the links are in the description. So go check that out and send them some love. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, see ya.